Tim, the, the big announcement here at uh, the Sport Aviation Expo in Sebring for 2009 is more goodies from Garmin. you you got to love it. Talk to me about the GDU 370 and 375. Certainly will. The 370 is really a panel-mounted version of the Garmin 695 because it does not have X, uh, XM. And the 375 GDU 375 is a panel-mounted version of the GPS map 696. And at first, we're going to sell them just as multifunction displays that are panel mountable in light sport aircraft, uh, retrofit light sport aircraft, and in experimental aircraft. Are these specifically designed for the experimental market. So, in other words, these are not certified units. These are not certified units. That's correct. If you can, uh, let's let's talk a little bit about the uh, 370 and 375 series in regards to what may be necessary to mount them in the panel, electrical requirements, and so forth. Okay, the uh, the panel mountable versions are differ from the the portables in that they do have an actual mounting faceplate and backplate, and also the connectors on the portables. The connectors for the antennas and, and I input output are on the sides. Those are all on the back, and there is a 50 pin connector on the back of these because they can be upgraded in the future to be primary flight displays as well as a multifunction display all on one screen. That's the really big difference between the panel mounted versions and the portable versions. As far as power is concerned, they do take 9 to 29 volts. Uh, so either 14 or 28 volt aircraft, it's fine. Uh, they also uh, uh, have the interfaceability if you put multiple units together to talk to each other when they are upgraded as a, as a primary flight display. And well, those primary flight display functions won't be available until probably towards the end of 2009. Well, that's the big news uh, above and beyond the 370-375 is that this is the first step in a whole new panel for the LSA community. That's, that's correct, and the experimental community. Uh, it, uh, it will give them the, the functionality and the flexibility to start out today with a multifunction display because if they're buying a 696 and they panel mount it, a 696, the portables, because, because of their limited input-output number of pins, can never be upgraded to, to be a primary flight display, whereas the 370 and the 375 absolutely can. Cirrus Design's Vision SJ50 single-engine personal jet offers exceptional fuel efficiency, flexible seating for up to seven, advanced avionics, and all the Cirrus safety features you expect, including the Cirrus airframe parachute system, with its detailed design, the Cirrus Vision is technologically advanced, yet engineered to be simple to fly, to allow owner pilots more lifestyle pursuits than any other personal aircraft. Learn more about the Vision SJ50 at CirrusDesign.com. Now, as I understand it, the, uh, the upgrade path will involve the additional display, the magnetometer, the AHARs, and all the appropriate uh, uh, data or data acquisition necessary as well as the probes and you've got yourself a full system. Uh, yes, what you'll have is, uh, you forgot to mention the uh, uh, engine instrument system yes, also. Absolutely. Engine instrument system uh, included uh, as well as a primary flight display and a multifunction display with all of the features that the present 696 has. All in one display. And you're right, what's, what comes with it in the back uh, towards the end of the year will be a package which includes the engine instrument system as well as the AHARs as well as the air data computer as well as the magnetometer and the temperature probe in order to get the entire system to work. Let's talk first about pricing on the 370 and the 375 and then the upgrade path to build a full-fledged system that can do everything but wash the dishes. Cer certainly will, certainly will. The 370 You'll see a street price about $3,295. The 375 will be $3,995, $3,995. And you can get the upgrade package, make it a one screen primary flight display, multifunction display for an additional $9,995. That is all the probes and all the sensors uh, we had just mentioned previously. So you're basically talking about building a serious whiz bang panel for under 15k. Absolutely, absolutely, yes. And, and that's just single. That's if you do a single one. Right. Uh, of course, you'd have to add another 3295 to get the dual, where you could have just primary flight display and multifunction display. And they, they, if you add the second display, you also get the reversionary mode. So if one of the okay. screens goes out, you will actually have all of your uh, functions will immediately and automatically transfer to the other screen. 
you got to be getting some serious OEM interest at this point. Yes, we are. As a matter of fact, Flight Design, the leading market share in the LSAs, has a 375 panel mounted here at this show in one of their CTLSs. Now, how will this be differentiated from the 300 series that you built for Cessna's forthcoming Skycatcher? A lot of the software will be different. The G300 is absolutely and positively exclusively a, a Cessna product. It uh, is designed for them. It is done exactly the way they preferred it. It will have the features and function set that keeps their flight controls and the way they want to train their pilots, it will have just those elements. Whereas when we go to the aftermarket, we have to be a lot more flexible because it's going to fit many, many aircraft. So there will be some uh, software development, of course, and, and engine uh, indication development work to, uh, to move forward. Okay, we are cleared for our approach. Have our Garmin GPS set up to fly the LPV. And look, here comes the glide path. And you're probably wondering how we can intercept a glide path when there's no ILS on the field. Well, hey, that's the beauty of WASP GPS. No ILS, no localizer, no problem. WASP gives us full vertical guidance even without ground-based navigation. Okay, next you're probably wondering why there's spit all over your side of the windshield. We've been hearing quite a bit from a number of our uh, compatriots in the instrument community about uh, all the things that they've been able to pack into their 696 and bring that with them. And as I understand, all the functionality of the 696 or the appropriate functionality from the 695 carries through to the individual panel mount units of 370 or 375? That is correct. Yeah, you have all the same feature sets as XM capability and even because uh, the 696 has it too, you can get some of the new XM uh, some of the newer XM uh, products like forecast icing and forecast turbulence uh, and uh, pilot reports. So it's, uh, it, it's really a, a nice system. That, those will be available on other products as we update their software, but they will be initially available on the, the GDU 375 because it has the XM. And that's, that'll be available when? That will be just the multifunction display units should be delivered uh, in March, possibly late March, hopefully earlier than that, but just two months. Outstanding. Okay. And, and the nice part is, is for anybody who's curious about how they're going to operate and so forth, all they got to do is go practice on the 696. They're in business. That is absolutely correct. The, uh, the, functions, the functionality of the MFD is, is identical to the 696. Well, one of the things that here that's very curious and very interesting to me and actually very hopeful is the fact that, you know, let's face it, Garmin is not exactly the little company you know, that, that hides in the corner. But you're taking the LSA and the experimental market very seriously. I've been working in, with the OEMs and with uh, the LSA market very exclusively, not only here, but also in Garmin Europe. So we've dedicated a lot of resources to this market. Like any other market, we see it as a, as a niche market that it, in general aviation that is really growing. And growth markets, as we know in today's economy, are hard to find. So we're very excited about the fact that the LSA market has had a down year like everyone did this last year, but it is starting to come back very, very strongly. So yes, we fully intend to be the leader in, in the LSA market as we have been and are now in the general aviation OEM market. Well, Tim, we thank you much for your time, and we look forward to uh, flying be, uh, in front of the uh, 370 and 375 in the not-too-distant future. I look forward to you d uh, developing it. <laughs> Thanks.